8 8 billion tons of carbon into our atmosphere 90 million tons of fish out of our oceans 11 billion trees toppled on land another year has elapsed on planet earth from every corner of the globe countries are heeding the environmental call and we'll reveal which ones are working to keep earth healthy and which ones are making it sicker the 2007 numbers are in and it's time once again to take our planet's pulse Planet Earth. The winds of change are rippling across its surface. Taxi cabs in New York are going hybrid. Light bulbs in Australia are going fluorescent. The whole of Vatican City is going carbon neutral. All around the globe, many of us are focused on changing our ways. Because last year, we accepted that the Earth itself is changing and all 6.6 .6 billion of us are the cause there's no species in all of preceding history that has the capacity to alter the way the world works in such profound ways as humankind from the air land and sea and through the creatures that live in and on them We'll rewind through some of the biggest news events of the past year. Taking the pulse of our planet all along the way. With the help of Yale and Columbia Universities and their Environmental Performance Index, or EPI, we will rank the environmental prowess of 141 countries and reveal which ones are helping to heal the planet and which ones are adding to its ills. Yale's Dan Esty directs the project. Our index looks at a core set of countries for which we can get data in a set of critical categories, air pollution, water pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, and then we try to add this up into an overall index. If the 2006 EPI is anything to go by, New Zealand is the country to beat followed by Sweden, Finland, the Czech Republic, and the United Kingdom. On the flip side, there are many on the list with much room for improvement, and some that are not exactly happy about it. And we say to them, don't blame us. We understand that you're unhappy, but let's together look at what you can do better. And we've had countries from the United Arab Emirates to Mexico to Korea come to us and say, help us move forward. And frankly, that's what we've been most pleased about. Assessing the Earth's health isn't quite as simple as taking its temperature. And with varying climates, populations, and economic circumstances, ecological issues don't always divide along national borders. But by culling and carefully comparing the best data from organizations like the United Nations, the Nature Conservancy, and the world's top research centers and universities. The EPI team believes they're establishing a meaningful baseline. We're a, a complicated animal, this planet. Uh, we've got lots of different pulses, but I'd also tell you that we're confident that we are presenting the cleanest, clearest, best picture of the state of the planet that is available today. Beginning with that blanket of nitrogen, oxygen, and other gases stretching 560 kilometers above our heads, our atmosphere. It's those gases, not our oceans, that give Earth its blue hue from space. And over the past 250 years, the levels of greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide and methane, have grown greater than any time in the previous 650,000 years. Mike Fay is a conservationist and National Geographic explorer in residence. Carbon accumulated for uh, well over something like 200 million years on this planet. 
And in the last um, kind of 60, 80 years, uh, we have burned probably 100 million years worth of accumulated carbon. For decades, scientists and politicians have argued over the exact causes and implications of this increase. But on February 2nd, 2007, the fighting stopped. After six years reviewing all available research, hundreds of climate experts from more than 100 countries, including the United States, issued a report through the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that confirms the Earth's air and sea temperatures are climbing and that the burning of fossil fuels and other human activities like deforestation are driving the change. Having to admit that that is true um, is a milestone. There's no doubt about that. They, they can no longer deny it. And so now what we need to do is go from recognition of the problem to action. Carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases are vital components of our atmosphere, trapping enough solar heat to make life possible. But as we pump more and more of these gases into the air, we trap more heat and the world gets warmer. Already, we've warmed up the Earth by about 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we continue emitting CO2 into the atmosphere at the same rate, that's likely to climb some four to seven degrees higher by the beginning of the next century. With developing countries like India and China growing at rapid rates, putting the brakes on carbon emissions is more challenging than ever. The average American may churn out five times more CO2 than the average Chinese. But last year marked a major turning point. China surpassed the United States in total carbon emissions. I like to teach the students at Yale that there's good news and there's bad news around China. The good news is if we get China on the right environmental trajectory, almost nothing else matters. But likewise, if we don't get China on the right track, almost nothing else matters. With its 1.3 billion people and a surging economy, China is now the workhorse of the world. Exporting inexpensive goods to wealthy countries abroad and importing much of their carbon footprints. The greater the demand for products, the more energy the country needs to keep up. As a result, China opens one new coal-burning power plant every single week. Each with the annual greenhouse gas emissions of about two million cars. Over the next 10 years, as an estimated 400 million people move from farmland to cities, many will grow wealthier and drive more cars. China's own footprint will only continue to grow. As we tally the greenhouse gas emissions from the Environmental Performance Index, China's higher carbon levels moves them down the list. But when we divide total emissions by the number of people in the country, we get a different picture. So this is who is got an economy that's just very carbon intensive and whose economies are less carbon intensive. From worse to worst, some top offenders in emissions per capita are Russia, Saudi Arabia, Canada, and the United States with Kuwait, Australia, and the United Arab Emirates in the bottom five. Dividing total emissions by a country's level of wealth, we see that Iceland, Costa Rica, Sweden, and Switzerland are curbing greenhouse gases, with Hong Kong earning the number one spot. What the important trend line for this year is, is that some countries who historically have had quite low emissions per person, China most notably, are suddenly deteriorating very rapidly.